Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habati fi Allah continue on in our reading and brief uh, study of the ascription to the Salafi Minhaj which was compiled by our brother uh, Abu Ab 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 Abbas Abu Yahya Hafizullah Ta'ala when we reach the portion of the treaties where he began to identify some of the uh, the regarding the ruling of ascribing to the minhaj of the salaf some athar some statements of the salaf and some of the contemporary scholars with regards to calling oneself salafi so he said he began with the statement of Sheikh al-islam ibn taymiyyah which is a well-known uh, statement of imam Sheikh al-islam ibn taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala where he said there is no blame on the one who manifests the madhab of the Salaf, affiliates to it, and ascribes to it. Rather, it is obligatory to accept that from him, and that is accepted by agreement because the madhab of the Salaf is nothing except the truth. Meaning that the madhab of the Salaf is Islam. So, of course, we as ascribe to Islam. And that does not mean, and we're going to talk about that a little more in detail, that it is an obligation to call yourself Salafi, but rather it's an obligation to follow the Medhev of the Salaf. And that's a very important distinction, as some people say that it's an obligation to call yourself Salafi, to say I'm Salafi and, and so forth, but really when we say something is an obligation, that means leaving it, that means you're rewarded for saying it, and by leaving it, you're sinful. So we don't have the evidence to be able to say that someone has to say they are Salafi, but rather someone has to follow the Medhab of the Salaf. And I hope that's clear. Uh, Shem Sadim Muhammad ibn Uthman of Dhahabi, Imam of Dhahabi, who died 748 after Hijri, uh, he said, a Salafi is he who is upon the Medhab of the Salaf. Sheikh Salih bin Fozan al Fozan, he's one of the major scholars here in Saudi Arabia, Allah Ta'ala, he said, indeed the Jama'ah as Salafiya is the one which is upon the truth. And it is the one that is obligatory to ascribe to and to act and attribute to. And whichever Jama'ah or Jama'at is upon other than the Jama'ah as Salafiya, then do not regard them as Jama'at. Uh, jama or jama'at of da'wah, meaning that you must adhere to the madhab of the salaf. And that which is not upon the madhab of the salaf, meaning how we understand aqidah, or how aqidah uh, was deduced from the Qur'an, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant for it to be understood, and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, articulated through authentic hadith, and how the Salaf, how the Sahaba, how they understood uh, the Madhab, how they understood how to practice Islam, how to understand Islam, how to understand the Aqidah. That is the Madhab of the Salaf. That is what is an obligation upon us to follow because that is the Asl of Islam. That is the Asl of Islam and it makes up the Usul of Islam, the foundation uh, of Islam. And that which uh, differs with it is from the Usul of Ahl Bid'ah. It's from the usul of those people who went astray in the various ways that people go astray. And as our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli mentioned, uh, Ahl uh, Bida Mutafawatin wa Ahl Sunnah Mutafawatin. That the people of uh, innovation, that they have different levels. And the people of Sunnah have different levels. It depends upon your knowledge and it depends upon your adherence to the Sunnah. And those people who are further away from the Sunnah, meaning some people from Ahl Bid'ah have some small Bid'ah. Some people have major Bid'ah. Some people have Bid'ah that takes them out of the fold of Islam. So, you know, making tawaf around graves and making dua and supplicating to the one in the grave, thinking that they can harm them or help them. Then these people have Bid'ah Mukaffara, the Bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Someone else may have a minor Bid'ah in the sense. But kullu bid'ah tin dalala, all bid'ah is a going astray, and all bid'ah takes you away from the path uh, sabi'ul mu'minin. 
Ibn Uthaymeen said, He said, A Salafi is following the methodology of the Prophet and his companions because he is from our Salaf. The companions are those who preceded us, therefore following them is Salafiyyah. So following the way of the Sahaba is Salafiyyah. Uh, Abdulaziz bin Baz, uh, Abdullah bin Baz, uh, Ta'ala said, he was a, a great scholar who who passed on, uh, <coughs> who died about uh, about 15 years ago now, approximately, 1420 uh, Hijri. Uh, he said, indeed the Salaf are those of the best generations. So whoever follows their footsteps and continues upon their methodology, then he is Salafi. So following the way of the Salaf. Uh, then the brother Abbas Abu Yahya Ta'ala he made another uh, title in his treatise or in his compilation he said the necessity of the title Salafiyah to distinguish from Ahl Bidah so as I said that some scholars I don't know of any that say directly that you must call yourself Salafi because again that would require Dalil from the book on the Sunnah that you have to. Because then when you say you have to do something in Islam, then that means, that necessitates, that by leaving it, you're sinful. But Imam al-Albani, he said, Indeed all the sects, no matter how close or far they are from the book of Allah and the Sunnah, it is not possible for any one of them to say, I am upon the minhaj of the Salaf, due to, an, due to the excellence uh, from Allah Azza wa Jal, except for those who embody the minhaj of the Salaf, Salaf as in their da'wah, minhaj, and manners. So Imam al-Albani is letting us know that many people claim Salafiyya. Many people claim Salafiyya. As we mentioned prior to this, and we mentioned an important principle that the scholars mentioned, which is, al-ibra bi haqaiq lisa bi musamiyat, that the proof of something is in its reality, in its substance, not in its name. So, for example, someone could have, uh, you know, could believe things that take them out of the fold of Islam, but yet they say they're Muslim. For example, the one who thinks that he prays to his scholars, to his sheikh, or the one who uh, prays to the dead, or the one who worships Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even there are some people in, in, in Western countries who say, I'm, I'm Buddhist Muslim. Or I'm Catholic Muslim. They, they say this. In my city, they say this. Some people say this. They like Islam a lot, but they still identify with, their Cath Cath uh, with Catholicism. So they're not Muslim. They cannot claim that. They cannot have both beliefs. You can't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son, but then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no son and no partners. Okay? So it doesn't matter what these individuals claim. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. Uh, our Shaykh, Shaykh Ubaid ibn Abdullah Ajabri, Ta'ala, he said, So you do not find a Khalafi, one who opposes the Salafiyya, especially from those who ascribe themselves to the modern day Dawah groups, except that he hates the ascription to Salafiyya. Because Salafiyya is not just an ascription. Rather, Salafiyyah is singling out pure sincerity for Allah and singling out following the Prophet Sallallahu letting us know again that uh, those, those conditions for having our deeds accepted, the, the shartan, or the two conditions for having your deeds accepted, which is sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and meaning ikhlas, and following the sunnah, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that that is Salafiyyah. That's what makes up Salafiyyah. Is having sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, following his commandments, avoiding his prohibitions, following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his commandments, and avoiding his prohibitions, and understanding Islam as he articulated, and understanding Islam in accordance with how the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala ibn understood Islam. Uh, Imam al-Bani also said, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was asked, why don't the Salafiyun leave these titles? Why don't those Salafis leave these titles? These names. Imam al-Albani answered, if you leave off the ascription to so-and-so, his, you know, party, to such-and-such such group, or to such-and-such, such, his, his mean like a group, and leave off the ascription to such-and-such such medhab, a school of thought, then at, the, at that time we can say we are just Muslims. 
As for these names, then they exemplify divisions in the Ummah due to current ideologies and biases to the Madhab. Meaning so many Muslims throughout history, they took names uh, other than just Muslims. Okay? And unfortunately, many of them, they took names of different Imams. They said, I'm an Imam, I am a follower of uh, Imam Abu Hassan al-Ashari. I'm Ashari. You have people today, they say they're Ashari. Why would you say you're Ashari? Why wouldn't you say that you're a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I mean, I don't understand why someone would say they're Ashari. Because their Aqidah and their creed only goes back to that Imam. It doesn't go back to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how the Salaf of this Ummah understood. Likewise, many other people, you have groups, the, you know, all kind of groups in history. The Qadiriyya, Jahamiyya, Mu'tazila, uh, all kind of different groups. And most of them, they had, and the Khawarij and Shia, they most of them had an imam that they followed, and then they followed and either made it itikad, or this particular individual had a specific belief, and they followed him. Instead of going back to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how the salaf understood this ummah. And so that's very important. This is how the people went astray and began to uh, break into groups and sects. Uh, then he said, therefore, there is nothing wrong if we say we will gather all these descriptions into one description. And this is not possible for anyone from those people, those who follow Medhab and Ahzab. If they have knowledge of the truth, then they can dispute whether that dawah to Salafiyah is the true dawah or not. And as proof for this, we use the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, and whoever opposes the messenger after guidance has become clear to him and follows other than the way of the believers, we will give him what he has taken and drive him into hell and evil it is as a destination. Meaning you cannot have a new dawah, a new minhaj, a new methodology that goes away from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu opposes the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu and thinks you're going to have success. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will give him what he has taken. So the one who says and follows a way other than the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu says he's Qadriya, he's Jahmiya, he's Mu'tazili, he's Aqlaniya, he's from, you know, following his intellect, whatever, he doesn't believe in the sunnah, he is Jamaat al-Tabliq, he's Jamaat al-Ikhwan al he's from Ahl al-Takfir wa Hijra, he's from Daesh, he's from this, that that's what they're going to get. But in the end, they will be of the Khasirin, they will be of those who suffer. Uh, and then the Imam said, is not using the title Salafiya, or actually the title, he says, is not using the title Salafiya praising oneself? Imam uh, al Bani says, he does not understand the meaning of Salafiyya, the one who says that this is praising oneself. Salafiyya means the correct Islam. So the one who says I'm a Muslim or my deen is Islam is just like the one who says I am Salafi. Uh, Imam al-Albani also said, Rahimullah ta'ala, Da'wah to Salafiyya wages war against al-Hizbiyya, about partisanship, in all of its different forms. The reason is very clear. Da'wah to Salafiyya affiliates to an infallible individual, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not Imam uh, Ashari, not the Kulabiya, not uh, uh, Hassan al Benna, not from any of the uh, Imams from before, but rather a Dawah to Salafiyyah is going back to Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said the reason is very clear Dawah to Salafiyyah affiliates to an infallible individual, and he is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, whoever deviates away from these, from these people, the Salaf, then we do not call him Salafi. So, again, it it's comes from your practice and your understanding of Islam. Uh, Sheikh bin Uthameen, rahmatullah said, Is it possible to be upon Salafiyyah in our modern times? He said, yes, it's possible. We say that it is Salafiyyah and Aqidah, even though it is not Salafiyyah as a time period. So it's different between the Salaf and Salafiyyah. Because the Salaf have proceeded in time. However, Salafiyyah are those who are upon Salafiyyah Aqidatin and Aqidah and action in the current time, and they are in respect to those after them, the Salaf. Then he entitled a chapter, he said, Why the ascription of Salafiyya? Is it a call to Hizbiyya by calling yourself Salafiyya? Imam al-Albani said, Why the ascription of Salafiyya? Is it a call to Hizbiyya or a sect or a madhab, or is it new? A new group in Islam, and this is what a lot of people have a misconception. They believe Salafiyyah, Dawah to Salafiyyah, is something new. 
that something came with Muhammad ibn al Wahhab, or it came uh, from Saudi, or it came from here, or it came from there. La. He answered, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, indeed the word as salaf is well known in the Arabic language and in the Sharia. And what is important to us here is the research from the Sharia point of view. It has been authentically reported from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said to Sayyidina, uh, Sayyida, Sayyida Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha during the illness from which he died Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, fear Allah and be patient for indeed I am a blessed Salaf for you. The scholars have used the word as Salaf uh, a lot and it has been used so much more than can be enumerated is sufficient for us to use one example, and that is what we need to fight against bid'ah. The Prophet said, uh, or he said, "Every good is the is in the following of the salaf, and every evil is in the following following uh, of uh, innovations of the khalaf." However, there are those who claim to have knowledge who re who reject this ascription, claiming that it does not have any foundation. So they say it is not allowed for a Muslim to say, I am a Salafi. It is if they say it is not allowed for a Muslim to say, I follow the Salaf Salih, of what they are upon of Aqidah, worship and manners. There is no doubt that this type of rejection, if this is what they mean, necessitates being free from the correct Islam which our Salaf Salih were upon. And at the head of them is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as is indicated in the Mutawatir Hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim and the other books from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, the best people are my generation, then those who come after them, and then those who come after that. Therefore, it is not allowed for the Muslim to free himself from the ascription to the Salaf, Salaf al whereas if a Muslim freed himself from any other ascription, then it would not be possible for anyone from the people of knowledge to ascribe them to Kufr or Fasuq openly. Or, or fasuk, openly sinning. And then he says, and this person who rejects this ascription, don't you see that he himself ascribes to a madhab from the madhahib? Whether this madhab was connected to aqidah or to fiqh? So he is either an ashari or maturidi, maturidi, or either he is from ahl hadith or hanafi or shafi'i or maliki or hanbali from those who enter into the title of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah even though he who ascribes to Ashari Madhab or to the four Madhahib, then he ascribes to people who are without doubt not infallible, meaning they're not per they make mistakes, they sin, and they, they were correct in some things and incorrect in others. He said, even though there are some from those scholars who are probably on the correct way, however, I wish they had rejected the likes of these ascriptions to individuals who are not infallible. As for the one who ascribes to the Salaf Asari, then he ascribes to that which is, in general, infallible. Indeed, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that from the signs of the Firqa to Najia, is that they, meaning the saved sect, is that they adhered to that which the Messenger of Allah wasallam was upon and what the companions were upon. So whoever adhered to it is with certainty upon guidance from his Lord. Without doubt, the clear manifest, distinguished, evident proof of this title and inscription which is to say, I am a Muslim upon the book and the sunnah, upon the methodology of our Salaf Asari, is that to summarize it by saying, I am Salafi. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah. Regarding our dars, an important question was asked, which is very important to clarify. Uh, regarding the Salaf and saying one is Salafi, okay? So, uh, the Salaf, a Salaf, okay? The Salaf, this refers to, uh, the Salaf that we're concerned about refers to the, we say a Salaf or Salaf Asadeh. So actually, I would delete the alif for them if we want to properly salaf asali, or maybe it is as salaf asali. Anyway, asali, as salaf asali. So actually, I think it is as salaf asali, or salaf asali. Allahu Akbar. Anyhow, the point is, uh, this refers to the pious predecessors. Pious, pious, better be careful on my spelling, 
predecessors. Good. The pious predecessors means those people who preceded, who came before, that were the righteous. And specifically, as a term, and I thought we went over this in the beginning, the pious predecessors, so when we say the Salaf, the Salaf, the Salaf, that means we're talking about the pious predecessors. We are talking about the first three generations. One, two, three. Meaning, Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, ejma'in. We're talking about the Sahaba. We're talking about the Tabi'in. Tabi'in, something like that, okay? And we're talking about the Itba'a Tabi'in, or the followers of the Tabi'in, we could just say. Followers of Tabi'in, okay? This is what it means in a nutshell when we talk about the Salaf. That's who the Salaf is. So the Salaf is not with us. We are not the Salaf. Our scholars are not the Salaf, and that's the difference if you say the Salaf would be a Salaf, the Salaf, a Salaf. No. The Salaf, this refers to the Sahaba, the Tabi'in, the followers or like the students of the Sahaba, a lot of the Tafsir comes from the Tabi'in, with Tabi'in. Tabi'in. Uh, and the itba'a tabi'in mean the followers of the tabi'in, like their students that were in righteousness and there's conditions for that. So the salaf refers to those first three generations. And the evidence for that, the Prophet said, The best people are those of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Who is that? The Salaf. Fight. The Salaf. Good. Salafi, when we say we are Salafi, and a Salafi, you know, if you say I'm Salafi, for example, this means that you are ascribing or calling yourself or adhering or following their understanding of Islam. So a person who's Salafi can be now. For example, I say that I'm Salafi. That means that I am trying to follow the understanding of Islam that the these that the Sahaba and Tabi'in with Ba'i Tabi'in, how they understood Islam. How they understood from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu because the Sahaba were there with the Prophet and the Sahaba are the ones they comp compiled the Quran. The Sahaba are the ones without them that was the preservation of the religion. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala preserved Islam through men, meaning mankind, not just men but women, Sahabiyat, and the scholars. And so this preservation of Islam was through the Salaf. The Salaf, these first three generations. That is what makes a difference. So a Salafi is someone who tries to follow this. They try to follow them in Aqidah, in Creed. They try to follow them in Menhaj, meaning uh, the methodology of how they understand Islam and how they give Dawah. So we say Menhaj or methodology. And they try to follow them in manners, Akhlaq. And in fiqh, meaning how they, how they, uh, you know, did everything from tahara to how they prayed, to how they fasted, to how they made hajj, to how they uh, did all the pillars of Islam and all the ahkam or rulings in Islam. So a Salafi is trying to follow, is trying to adhere to this way. What distinguishes them from other groups? is there are, many, there are other groups who say, uh, you know, maybe they, they don't say anything about Salafi. Some say they follow the Salaf, but yet they only go back so far 
and they only follow Islam in accordance with their particular imam or their particular way of understanding Islam instead of adhering to the book of Allah and the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how the pious predecessors understood Islam. So sometimes they'll take one famous imam and they will just follow him or they distort what he believed and make a new methodology. So this is what different makes a Salafi different from uh, another group or another individual. So I hope we understand the difference between the Salaf and uh, someone who is Salafi as an individual. Mm -hmm. So we see that, that difference. Uh, that the Salaf, a Salaf Asaleh, so I hear it will be an adjective, so I'm, I'm forgive me my, anyway, this is, uh, this is, here, this is an adjective, because it follows this noun in its exact, um, in all of its characteristics, okay? So then this is describing the pious predecessors. What predecessors? The pious ones. Those are the ones we want to follow, because Salaf in Arabic, it means, one of the meanings is that it's just talking about those who came before you could be your great-great-grandparents and those who, who came before you from a particular people. Well, when we talk about the Salaf and you look at it in the books of, of Aqidah and the books of Fiqh or the books of whatever, in the Islamic books you'll find the Salaf, they mean these pious predecessors. The Sahaba, Tabi'een, Witba'i Tabi'een. And when someone calls themselves Salafi in this time, that means they are, they are ascribing themselves or associating themselves or making a claim that they are trying to adhere to this madhab or that they are adhering to this madhab. Whether they're doing it or not is something different. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.